Let's get this show on the road. So this is Mooley's studio set, 1995. This is, uh, I'm always hesitant to play non-game music because I'm not sure on the licensing of it. Because with game music, there's typically like this, uh, I guess sort of like unsteady truce between game studios and, uh, like youtubers and streamers that you can you know that you can use it as content without paying any licensing which <clears throat> who knows someday that might change but for now that's that's how it works but for regular music or for non-game music it's an entirely different story obviously but okay so today i want to show off some things so I'm going to set some settings here, and I'll explain what they are after I've changed them. So let's go to here. So I had... Let's also just enable this profiler now, because I'm going to show off some performance tweaks that I did. So I've mentioned before... For, for a couple months, I've been banging my head against some performance problems in this area where there's like severe frame rate drops. But I've realized what it is. It was that. That was set. Basically what it is, is these are awareness cones for these enemies that are like snipers so they can see a wide area. So when the player walks into this, the guy sees you, shoots you, and they are typically on masks 2 and 3. This is the player, this is enemies, so that allows for infighting. But for minor performance improvements, I also disabled that for this one at least. But basically what happened was, um, well, in my defense, so this seems like a dumb problem, you know. I just had this set wrong. I don't even know why it was set to have this layer. Why does it take so long to save? Like, I, I don't even know why this was set. So yeah, kind of dumb problem. But in my defense, the only reason that I thought to check this was because I was reading the Godot source code. And they mentioned in a comment that bullet physics, which is used internally, 
does not actually have any area like system, like no like trigger zones and things like that. So I assume what's actually happening, what this is doing is it has to do like a full physics collision check with this, which I'll just diagram this out. So let's say you have some shape here, which has like a bunch of vertices, so it's like a complicated shape or whatever. And then, let's say this red just represents an area. Now, intuitively, if you're just checking if this overlaps with a thing, like if you're doing like regular trigger zone stuff in areas, it's not that, it's not going to be that bad performance wise, because you just check, you know, you'd have to check at worst every triangle, and then if one of them overlaps, you're like, okay, cool, it overlaps, and then you're done. But if you're doing actual physics calculations, it also has to figure out things like which direction do you push it to get it unintersected? Like, all this all this stuff, like, how much does it intersect? How, like, what is the normal and what are the slopes of the surfaces that it's touching? So that suddenly creates, like, a massive amount of computation with this, especially with big areas that overlap a lot of stuff, because even though it's trivial to determine if it just overlaps, but it gets a lot more complicated when you have to figure out, like, like what direction do you push this object so it's, you know, like, so it's just barely touching, which is something that you need in physics with, like, regular bodies. So because Bullet doesn't have support for just area checking... <laughs> yeah, hi. Though, admittedly, Bullet is very, very good at just the regular collision stuff. Like, I've had performance issues with Godot 4's physics, or actually just Godot's physics in general. So, like, it's really good at what it does, but what it does isn't quite what the engine needs. So there's some, like, odd, like, these really harsh edge cases. So that basically fixes it, but I'm going to unfix it, because I'm going to show off a couple knock-on effects that I've had that I decided to try and fix as well. <clears throat> So basically, you know, that's that's all well and good. I actually fixed it, but I had to do a bit of digging, and I did some other changes first. So, you know, a cut twice, measure once, as usual. But let's get up here. So I'll show off what the frame rate actually does. And I was so I was so sure that I'd have to like completely change the physics system or collision checking and stuff, but it's like, no, bullet's probably better than what I could do. I just don't know how to use it. Well, I'd have, I'd have to look into it. I still have misgivings about how bullet is architected, like the callback hell that it is. But alright, let's see if I can get some bad frame right here. I need to get these two guys moving. Specifically, I need them to actually jump and move, because that's what triggers the area to, like, recalculate all its collisions and stuff. And I need them to look at me. So, especially this one. Yeah, this one. Oh, yeah. So we can see that enemy jumped. So that means that now it's actually moving, and now we can see the frame rate going to hell. So let's stop that. So I did a few changes. One is, I've changed how the physics is calculated, because before, this was a very weird thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up Sublime. <clears throat> so, in a lot of game engines, physics is calculated in a fixed time step, which means that, like, you know, let's say the game is running at, you know, 144 FPS, and these are each, like, one frame. So it's like a little object that's falling or something. So it, like, goes up and goes down. If you ran this, if you ran this at a different frame rate, this physics calculation, you would have to, it would be, like, it would be here, and then maybe it goes, like, this, and then, like, that. You know, so it winds up doing something different for whatever reason. And you don't want that. So game engines typically run at a fixed frame rate, for the physics at least, where 
you know, if it's if the game is only rendering at 30 FPS, it'll just run multiple of these physics steps at the same time, or in one frame. And that's all well and good, unless the physics frames are what's taking a long time. Like, what if this, you know, if it's running at 144 FPS, it expects this to run at 6 milliseconds, give or take. But what if this is running at, say, 9 milliseconds, which is what each of these steps actually takes in here. Well, now it's, now it's doing that with multiple steps, but if it runs at 9 milliseconds, then eventually, sooner or later, the engine's going to go, uh-oh, the physics are running behind, so now we have to do two physics steps this frame. So then suddenly, your frame takes 18 milliseconds, and then the engine goes, uh-oh, the physics is even further behind, we need to do three physics steps this frame. So then suddenly your frame takes 27 milliseconds. So you get this deadly like feedback loop where the frame rate gets worse and worse because the engine is running the physics more and more frequently to try and catch up when the physics is exactly what's causing this frame rate dip. <clears throat> but something Godot used to do, let's see, is that it would only record one physics step in the profiler. Let's see if I can figure that out. Where is that? I added a few new, added a few new things here. Maybe it's performance. Yeah, here it is. I think. Let's just let's just look for step. But okay. So here it is. Here's where the actual physics steps are done. So for iterations advanced up physics steps. This is how many times this frame it has to run the physics calculations. <laughs> Excuse me. So like, if you want to, so yeah. And then it records, it used to just be, this was just the last physics step, the time that it took. So now it's actually showing you all of the physics steps at the same time, or showing me it. Excuse me, I'm coughing. But yeah, so that was the feedback loop. So now I have a new thing here. Where I can change the physics FPS. So that... So what we're seeing here is that at its worst, it's about 10 to 15 FPS. Or like, yeah, 10 to 12 FPS. Pretty bad. So let's test it with the minimum frame rate being 30. So no optimization. This is just using the, my new system that I'll explain. Let's see. I don't think they I don't think box colliders would be dramatically faster. In fact, they might actually be slower because spheres and like circular objects are really simple to check collisions on. But let's do uh let's go back here. Should have saved. <clears throat> Because I think most of the computation is probably figuring out things like the intersection and like how it would push the object, which I don't think is dramatically simpler with boxes. And if a box is rotated, it might even be more complicated. Well, maybe. I don't actually know. I think it'd have to do some funky transformation work. How do I get up here? Hang on. There we go. This is much better. So now basically what's going to happen is if this guy jumps, the frame rate will get worse. Actually, let's make sure the profiler is on. It is good. So if we get one of these guys to jump,
maybe. There we go. <clears throat> so we can see the frame rate has not been completely devastated. But if we look at the profiler, we can suddenly see that my physics time, or this physics frame time, is running different. So instead of being at like, instead of getting up to like 90 milliseconds here, it's still maintaining, you know, at its worst, it's still being like, uh, what is this, 50 milliseconds or something like that, 60? So, you know, it's still like 15 milliseconds at its absolute worst, but it's generally much better. It's around like 20 to 30. So, not great, but certainly better than it was. And that's because now, I have that minimum physics frame. So, the game will, if the physics is getting, if the physics itself is taking a lot of time, it'll, in, it'll like reduce the precision of the physics calculation. Since, basically, I'm willing to let the game engine do this black line, where it's slightly less precise, within within some bounds. Because 144 is basically just because my monitor is 144 hertz, and I want it to be smooth. But if the frame rate's getting low, it'll do that. And the exact weighting, if we go to advance here, I changed this logic. Basically, now it has this target frame slice, which is our target frame rate, or one divided by the frame rate, one divided by the minimum frame rate, and then the actual amount of time that the last physics steps were taking. So this is the maximum, like, one of these individual physics steps. So like here, it looks like they were taking between, like, you know, 9 to 10, sometimes as high as 20 milliseconds. So it's basically, it takes the actual amount of time that the frame took. So like, you know, if the frame rate is super, super bad, just in general, it'll slightly, you know, reduce the precision of physics to give some performance. But if the physics itself is performing badly, then it'll like crank up, the, or it'll crank down the perform or the precision of it. It'll be like, because basically, if I can't run the physics at 144 FPS, there's just nothing else I can do. Like, the only alternative is to just run the physics multiple times per frame and then make the physics even worse, because that's exactly what we were seeing beforehand. Where, you know, it was, it was getting worse and worse and worse. But now, at least, in this worst-case scenario, where the physics is performing very badly, it'll just, it'll just do what it has to do or it'll just reduce the performance, and we'll lose some frame rate, and it'll feel a little weird, though it's not actually that dramatically different. But the but the game will still run at decent, like, much more acceptable frame rate, not like 10 FPS and slowing down. But this, this new thing does have some consequences. Well, actually, it does have some interesting positive effects. I've realized a lot of times when I load a chunk, the game's frame rate will pause for like multiple frames. Yeah, yeah, it affects the precision, but the game isn't super precise anyway. Like, there's stuff that I want to do with, uh, or I guess the most precise the game has to be is like on the order of like a tenth of a second or something like that. Like, I think the game will be basically, um... Because it, it more emphasizes the puzzles. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, what's the acceptable trade-off here. Because I've tested going as low as 12 FPS here. So just making this, like, ultra low. So if the frame rate is, like, horrible, it'll still function. But, I don't know, if, I don't know how well the game... I don't know how well the game would respond with a twelfth of a second between, like, each input. 
but I could make it like 60 FPS if it doesn't if I do encounter issues or something just to just to give a little bit of leeway because 144 is kind of pushing it for players but I have noticed that so if we go if we teleport back out here wait, what is happening did my game what happened I think my game crashed or froze somehow I don't know what I did I'll have to look into that. I think I was alt-tabbing and pausing at the same time. But anyway. Let's go to like... This is not quite where I want to be. There we go. Whenever I load a chunk, I used to have it, or there used to be like several seconds where the frame rate was really choppy. And I'm realizing now it was because of this exact issue. Where basically it would load something in, and then the frame rate would be really low. So it would have to run the, or, you know, the frame would skip once. So then the frame rate, or the physics would be like, uh oh, we have to run eight times now to catch up. And then it would run the physics eight times. And because it ran the physics eight times, the frame took really long. So then the next frame, it would be like, uh-oh, we have to run the physics eight times again. And then it would only be like by a stroke of luck, like maybe the physics just didn't take very long this particular frame. It would stop doing that. So like basically, with fixed physics steps, if the physics ever take like a large amount of CPU time or a large amount of the frame time, you get into these sort of frame rate death spirals where it just gets worse and worse and then might very slowly get better as the frame rate alleviates. So doing it with these variable time steps sacrifices some of the precision, but it prevents those death spirals, so the performance should in general be better. But now I have... So now instead of like the frame rate chugging for multiple frames, or like a full second every time it loads a chunk, there's a just one but much more noticeable frame rate spike so I'll have to still make the loading take faster. But now it's only one frame that I have to worry about. Though there was also a... There was also a quirk of this. So if you might have noticed... Now it lags when I save. Because the saving happens in physics. And now it's checking how long each physics frame takes. And if it took too long, it reduces the frame rate of the physics, which is also where, like, the camera is moved and stuff, so it makes it suddenly feel like the camera, like, the camera is moving smoothly, like, rotating smoothly, but the character isn't. Because it's doing that save in the physics frame. And the physics, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to change today. Basically, the only reason it does that is because it's such a simple process. Basically, where is it? Save zone. On body entered. Global.save checkpoint. I don't need to do it this way. I can just do... I can just do that. And I'll even make that one deferred as well. So yeah, let's see how this looks. Because yeah, the only reason it was in physics is because it didn't have any noticeable impact before. But now that lag can actually affect the frame rate over multiple frames, it's more important. Uh, hmm, actually. There's something weird with this still. You know, I think I actually just might need to do full multi-threaded saving, which I probably need it anyway. But alright. So let's just do that then. That'll be my little project for today. Hmm. So let's make a new thing. Save async, save async.
Excuse me. So let's do... It'll have to do this one first. And let's go to the VAR... Um... Save grid. Let's do game state dot duplicate. So it'll just make a copy of it, and then this will be true. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, no, it won't be. Because the resources themselves won't change, and if they do, then it's kind of fucked up. So let's make this have a var repeat state. Game state, the state, then if r equals OK, let's just do then save complete. And let's just have this be underscore, so that way anything that's already calling it elsewhere in the code will not call it. Oh wait, let's do um R. Is it air? What is it called? Hang on. Save. Resource saver dot save error. All right, let's just say it's fine. Okay, so let's make sure the player, uh, hang on. Now my little player, uh, thing. Where's my save UI? Gaming save stats. Oh, I thought she was cut in half for a second. Stats menu, UI. Okay, so this already does what I want. It has prepare save and complete save. Alright, there we go. Let's let's just let's just crank it and see what we do. Oh wait, no, it has to it has to wait for the thread to complete first though. I mean the thread should be finished, but Okay. And look at that. Uh it isn't it is not calling the save complete marker, but it is uh 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 Working. Start returns a value. Why is the why is why is it so slow here though? Hang on. If res not equal to okay.
What are the other things? Okay, so those should all be fine. Thread dot start. Thread already started. Let's do if save thread dot is active return. So you can't save when it's still saving. All right. Now let's see if it works. So I think duplicate, and I think du yeah, there we go. Look at that, beautiful. And that little saved icon actually is delayed by half a second, I'm pretty sure. Wow, the frame rate is like weird here though. Hang on, there's something off with my... Oh, it's because the game is running at the same time. Wait, that's not... Wait, but that's not... That doesn't normally happen though. Oh well. Save complete. Should... Oh, I guess? Huh. Weird. Maybe it, maybe it just actually does take half a second. Nah, it'll... Because the thread is active, or I can use basically whether the thread is active to mark it. Because once the thread is actually done saving, then it'll do its call deferred. So then that'll actually be what waits for the thread to finish. I think. Actually, there might be a bug. Let's still, let's just put a little warning here. But I think it won't actually save while this is running because of this little, little doobly. However, this does mean that the player could potentially save and load at the same time. Uh, oh, okay, turn to night. That's another thing I need to fix still, is the shader compilation. Oh yeah, also I fixed Jackie's face slightly, though it still looks a little weird from certain lighting angles like this one. Uh, hang on, let's, let's get a closer look at this. Yeah, basically I just had to pull Jackie's, the corner of Jackie's lips, or the corner of Jackie's mouth, backward. And I think it looks much better, but it's still a little goofy. But now it's goofy and, like, she's actually making a goofy face instead of, like, her face is, like, fundamentally wrong. But this is a performance stream, not a modeling stream. Also, I need to get up here again. Wait, why is this? Hang on. Why can I not get that from here? Oh, I broke a platforming challenge. Hang on. That's what I get for changing geometry and then not playing the level again. I played this level so many times, but I raised these little blocks up by like six inches or something. So now I can't shoot that switch from here, which I need to do. Let's let's stop that because there's something there's something off with my frame rate calculations maybe. Actually, let's put that in the bugs. Uh
But okay, so these need to be placed... These need to be moved further back again. To about... Uh, here. Let's see how that looks. Where am I? Oh, I'm right here. Why am I here? Where did I save? Oh, I guess I'm fine. Huh? Oh, I know. It's because the reset animation didn't change. Wait, actually, hang on. Hold the phone. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll just I'll just do it this way. I think it might have actually been a bug with my reset animation because I did move these once before. Wait, what the heck? Uh, no. Delete the key. Eventually, I'll figure it out. And also, this will be good because I need to make sure that the physics interpolation is, uh... What do I need to make sure of? Why am I... Why does that... I don't get that. Okay, but whatever. Now I can shoot that. Works beautifully. Then I come out here. Works wonderfully. Then I can get up here. I might need to put a little light on this thing. I'll do that. Wow, the, actually. Okay, so I think whatever whatever changes I made do definitely seem to have made this way worse. Oh. Uh, let's do... Um... Yeah, you know what, let's just have, a, let's just have another effect function for uh, saving synchronously. Actually, no. Now I can just do uh, save sync state and then save complete. Wait, not quite. Okay, good. So that should save synchronously when the player is quitting, because I don't want to do threading when we're exiting. And then for load sync, let's do... Loading save. And this one, because when you're loading a game, people expect the game to lag a little bit, we can just do if game... or if load thread that is active.
what is it called? Save thread. Because, like, the player's not going to be playing if they're loading the game. And thankfully, I only save a tiny bit of content. Well, honestly, it's not really that tiny anymore. But yeah, so with my new little thing, anytime the physics step takes a long time, it'll reduce its frame rate. So it'll cause a more perceptible lag. Or a more perceptible, like, frame spike. Which is better than having, like, you know, the feedback loop, but it is still now some now a new thing that I have to work on. So it's not like a, a not a free lunch, I guess. Why is this that way? So I want this here, but I want it to be. Just a little bit more emphasized. You know, my very subtle lighting, the hint to the player where to go, I think is a bit too unsubtle. Let's do a radius of like 10. And also, I think I want this Omni light here or here to go away. One of one or the other, something. And I want this to be darker and more yellow. Wait, is it not affecting it? Why is it not affecting it? Hmm. Yeah, I did a... I don't know. I think with, um... I think there's, like, a, a realm of, like... Well, with realism... So, yeah, I had some tweets about, uh... Uh, uh... Resident Evil 4's yellow paint. Because... I think it... I think with realistic graphics, at, at least, there has to be some, uh... I guess a greater expectation for credibility in the world. So that's a nice thing about, like, this game is very abstract anyway. So I can just add, like, I don't know. I don't feel like the lights feel particularly out of place because nothing is particularly in place. Hang on, I actually don't like the lighting now. Too yellow. Okay, yeah, I've, I've made a serious bug with the editor performance now, so I don't know what that is. I'll have to look back at the old code and see how it goes. And why is this now suddenly like super yellow, but only in the regular scene? Hang on, let's close all tabs. Why is this not working? Like only this one. It's like if I disable these Four? What? Is it the ex is it the extents? No, that's not it. Is it the max distance? Yeah, I guess at least for me, yellow paint is fine if it was like Splatoon. Or if, if it was like a game where paint is not out of place. Like, I think yellow paint would look bad in this game, even. Okay, now it's like too... What have I done? What have I done here?
And why are there so? And why can I only have like one reflection or like three reflection grubs or four, whatever it is? I don't get what's happening. I've done something wrong. Oh well. I mean, at least now I can actually see the reflection grub. Yeah, I think lighting, like, providing lighting in the correct place is also, like, a very common trick for this. And I think it works much, much more subtly, I guess. Especially if it's places where lights already should be, like hallways and paths and things like that. So just having the lights on for the place where the player is supposed to go, it doesn't feel, uh, I don't know, condescending, I guess. Ooh. What was that? Ooh. Um, you know, I think something's gone awry because the game has frozen. Uh, let's stop that and let's see what happened in the logs here. So let's go to my... Ghetto folder, user data at the ends of arrows. So there were two big frame drops. Right before the end. I don't even know if they survived here. Oh yeah, also I made some prof- oh wait, I'm gonna switch to this editor since it's dark. And then I have a little bit more work. So I added a few more things. Like, now there's a timer for like the draw calls that happen. And also now it also lists the actual like, number of ticks that have passed from this function instead of just the start and end time where I have to do the mental math myself. So it's really informative, like here, render list took 1200 ticks, but the draw calls from that only took 216 ticks. So most of it is probably like switching materials and things like that. So like it, it indicates that a big incentive should probably be to reduce the amount of setup that it does, but okay. That's not what I need to worry about. What I need to worry about is if I have those big freezes and crashes, because I don't know what those were. Maybe I need to run the game in... Um, what's it called? Visual Studio, and then pause it when it freezes. Also, why are these steps zero? Is it because it pop? Is it because I paused? Like, that would make sense if pausing the game made it so the steps take barely anything. But then why is it running three of them? But okay, that's not, that's not useful. Hmm. Okay, let's put... Could be file IO.
Yeah, let's do that. Let's get my construct file. Or scons file, or whatever it is. And let's add some new stuff here. PT profile. Let's just do my NP profile then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the discipline to use like a, a another task board, so I just write everything in a big text document. But the problem is, the list of bugs has just gotten longer and longer, and I very rarely actually even. Hey, look at that one bug gone, and uh, that one's gone because I deleted all of that. And I think. Ah, well, some of these are fixed. Let's do, like, NP profiler. So I'm going to go to my little C++ thing. Oh, yeah, I put it in core. So yeah, let's just do... I'll just make everything have empty constructors. Actually, what do I... Hang on. I need to figure out... Oh, yeah, here. This way I can compile the engine without the profiling to figure out if that's the issue here. Because, I mean, I think that's the only thing I've changed other than the variable time steps, and I don't know how that would cause, like, freezing. Because I don't think the actual time interval that the physics simulates in would change significantly. Well, I guess it could, because then there's things moving farther distances. Actually, I think for the de for the const or de or for the destructor, I can just do that. Then I can explicitly disable the destructor, which could be And the reason I'm doing it this way, instead of just undefining everything, is because um, sometimes I explicitly create these objects, or these markers. Because, like, there's a timer where I can call little functions. So this way, instead of having to explicitly define that, I can just make it do nothing. Oh, and this is private, so I can just do...
and I found out that um, Bullet Physics has its own internal uh, profiling library that actually works very similar to mine, but it does more sophisticated stuff like keeping track of like every function call instead of just keeping track of the times. But I don't know actually how to use it, so I'll have to figure out how Godot calls the engine, because I think it wipes the profile data the way that it's currently set up. Actually, that might be a good thing to look at. Because it might be this BT enable profile. Oh well. Let's do... Because um... I don't know if... Because if... Because my thing should run very quickly. And very crudely. Unless this log F is causing issues. But with the, um, with the BT profiler, I don't know what it does, so it might cause more freezing. But okay, let's do, um, CD. Do. Scons tools equals yes. Profiler equals no. Wait. Actually, if I don't change any... Oh, wait, no, I already changed it here, so who cares? Wait, no, actually, I am going to change this. Well, I'll change, I'll change this part. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to change the header at all. I'm only going to change this part. Basically, this way, I can keep changing, I can change this back and forth, and it'll do basically nothing. Because these will just all be no ops. Because otherwise, every time I change this, because this profile header is now used in a bunch of places, so if I have to change it every time that I want to set the profiler on or off, then I'll have to recompile a bunch of files and that'll be annoying. But if I just change it here, this will be much easier to deal with. And then it'll only change if I do like link level optimization. Target equals release. Debug. J12. This does mean that I have separate flags here. So if debug is not enabled, the profiler is also not enabled. Or at least that little profile macro. Wait, what did I change with main timer sync? Hmm. Oh well. And if and if this doesn't fix the little freezing issue, I'll see about this. Cause I did change some because I did reorganize this function, because basically it used to be that the advanced function called advanced checked, and then advanced checked called advanced core. But since I was changing the arguments, I had to change the arguments for all of them, and it was like, these aren't called by anything other than this one function, so they might as well be one function. So yeah, now they're one function. Because there was no, like, logical differentiation of work. It was just... three functions to do one thing, for the sake of it, almost. But maybe the, at some point there was some use for it, and they just didn't change it back. Okay, so I'm going to test two things. I'm going to test if the game engine still runs super, super bad while I play. And if the game randomly freezes, 
sometimes forever. And then I'll split the difference and see if it's just the, the bullet physics profiler doing something wrong. So let's pause, because... Okay, so now it's running all good. Uh, and the game... Okay, there we go. For some reason, my mouse came up. Now the game is still running good. Wait, what if it's... Is it just chunk 113? Okay, so this chunk... So this reflection probe is still invisible. Just this one. You know, all the other ones, they're perfectly fine. But this one... Yeah, that one's causing issues. And yeah, we're, we're running... We're running smooth as butter here. Okay, so I guess there's something up with the profiler. I mean, that's good to know. It's, I'm glad that it wasn't my other change, because that was more complicated to figure out. Hmm. So let's test... Let's test with the... Let's make the BT profiler separate. That's not what I want. I want Sconstruct again. And base. Oh, whoops. Uh, I'll figure this out eventually. Hopefully that doesn't change a bunch of headers. So this will be NP profiler equals yes, BT profile equals no. And I think this will by default be true. Because I'm suspecting that it's the BT profiler. Because that was the one that I've only enabled recently. Because I've been playing a bunch with this other, with my little profiler. So I think it's because, like, if we look at QT Quick Prof, or BT Quick Prof. Uh, wherever it is, bullet. So it's in Linear Math, BT Quick Prof. So when you create, so this is the macro. Where's the macro? There's a little macro, BT profile. So this basically does the exact same thing as my little profile macro, where it just creates a little struct. But their little struct, oh, it's a profile sample. So let's look at what that profile sample does. BT enable or BT enter profile zone. Hmm. BTS enter funk. Hmm. It looks like uh, they do nothing. Um. Well, I, I uh, have no idea what it does then. Maybe it's this dump recursive. Maybe there's just something going wrong with this. I, I can't tell. I have no idea. Let's just... Uh, let's just recompile the entire third-party library system. I have no idea why this library has to recompile because of that. Wait, no, I think I actually do understand. Because I'm changing a global define. Maybe everything has to change. 
Yuck. Okay. Do I really have to fully recompile? That feels inaccurate. Because why did I only have to recompile? What did I do differently here? I only changed this, this, and this. Wait, hang on. Did I do something different with my release or scons line? Target equals release debug profile. Tools equals yes. MP profile equals yes. BT profile equals no. Target equals release debug. This one, tools equals no. NP profile equals no. So is it just because I did this different? That is unfortunate if that is the case. Also, I still have no idea what this OIDN is. I'm curious what it is, because it seems to have some sort of like just-in-time compiler. Direct protecting autoencoder. What's an autoencoder? Let's look this up while the compiler is raging away. Did it fall asleep? Artificial neural network. Does this thing have machine learning built into it? What is this? Set image, set one eye, set... Hmm. I mean, it network transfer function, so it is... Under the Apache license. I mean, this seems like it's a... Uh... Oh, the music's, the music's cutting out because of my intense compiling action, because the entire... The whole game has to recompile. I thought I was being so clever. But as it turns out, if you change a define, uh, it has to just invalidate the entire compilation, I guess. I think it's because there was no previous... Well, uh, I guess that makes sense. I thought... Okay, so it's because this was a new variable. And because this was a new variable, it didn't compare it to any previous value, so it's like, okay, so I guess, you know, let's just compile only the files that changed, because presumably if there's some new define, you know, it only affects new files, maybe. I think it's probably just a bug with this. Tragic. But who knows, maybe it has some magic way of determining if a define is actually used inside of a C++ file. So it doesn't have to incrementally recompile everything. I'll experiment with that. Because if that's the case, I might just, uh... I might just put it in the C++ file. And just make everything no ops. Because that would be faster than actually specifying the option and recompiling the entire game engine. So where is OIDN used? Oh, it's used in the denoise. Open image denoise. Hmm. Okay, so this is how they denoise the light mapper. Hang on, I'm gonna 
pause the music. Well, the more you know. Technology sure is something. I think it'd be kind of neat if they just exposed the, uh, well, I guess it's, I guess if it's only for, um, TZA. What is a TZA file? Just a big hexadecimal file. Hmm. So is this a built-in thing to construct? I'm going to see if defines require a rebuild of the entire thing. Let's just look up scons cpp defines. Because I would like those to be just options I can turn on and off. But maybe I won't need to super frequently once I get once I figure out which one is freezing the game. Yeah, honestly, I think it's 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 probably because my little NP profile, my little profiler. If where is it? Log and wipe. No, it's not here. It's in main. BT enable profiler. Yeah. Currently, what it does, it just logs it and it dumps all. And that's if the um, if this profiler manager or profile manager has been running for more than I think this is two milliseconds, no, twenty milliseconds for one single physics step, then it logs all of it. You know what, let's also... You know, maybe I should remove the profile logger. Because otherwise it's going to wipe all of these files. Yeah, you know what? If def np profiler. Otherwise, it'll be null, and the game can handle that pretty well. Or the profiler already just wipes if it's null. And if it's an op anyway, then it's an off, and it, it doesn't matter. Though I will need to also have... Both of these have to be enabled. So let's see, CPP defines collection of preprocessor definition flags, B. So does it invalidate the entire file? Let's see, scan CPP defines. Uh, Full free compile. My engine is uh, my uh my computer is kind of maxed out. I think I can't even type in uh, Firefox.
Oh, well, at least we have some exciting content to look at. Ah, uh, well, whatever. I wasn't that interested in figuring it out anyway. Because once, because I assume, once this confirms my pre-existing bias, that it's the BT profiler that I'm either using wrong or that it's just doing something wrong. Because it was also basically completely undocumented as far as I can tell. Like, I have not been able to figure out any way of actually, like, um, or like any... Like, even the um, comments are very sparse on it, even though it tends to be pretty good. But, well, no, there are things here. Maybe it's just the documentation on the website. Like, maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to use these dump systems? you know, by myself, because I basically just have this, um, well, no, because I don't see anywhere else these, were, I didn't see anywhere else these were called, because basically I modified it because it used to just print F, so now it's actually using one of Godot's built-in loggers. So that way I can just log it all to the same profiling file that I'm using for the regular game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exhilarating content, I think. But if the game doesn't crash, and if the game doesn't lag to hell, I'll be happy, and it'll be perfectly fine. But I guess that, that does explain why... I wasn't getting any data from this profiler because the actual, like, this profile macro was doing nothing because this, this function doesn't do anything. I think BT set custom enter profile zone funk. I think this is what I wanted. Maybe? I don't have any idea how this works, though. I'm realizing. Because it's, it's much more complicated. Because there's like these iterators and these nodes, and I, th you know, I thought what it was doing, what it was, is it was creating one of these nodes, you know, for each function call, and then I was like creating a, a pointer to it, you know, and like doing this stuff, you know, with every function call, and then it'd be like, yeah, I can see why that would cause it to lag, and I can see why that would potentially like free stuff. It lit this macro literally doesn't do anything, I'm pretty sure. Because it's this, um... Because, yeah, it's this. It's this function. Like, if there's no profiling enabled, it just, it still does nothing. So, the only thing I can think of is that if this is somehow not null... Oh wait, that actually could be... Well, no, because... What happens if it gets iterator? Return new... It is calling new, which could be a minor issue. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna assume that 
I'm not supposed to actually call this dump all function unless I've set this callback function to do something special. And for some reason, it's not set up to do whatever it's supposed to do. Let's see if I can play music. The freezes and skips are, 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 part, are part of the aesthetic. You know, they enhance the aesthetic, I think. I wonder what would have been faster, you know, the game engine compiling itself or me compiling the file by hand. Hmm, that could actually be a very interesting thing to try at some point. Like compiling one file by hand into object code to link into the other files. Hmm. It'd probably take a little while to figure out, at least. Oh yeah. Yeah, the song does have some actual, like, skipping and uh, pauses and stuff, since it's like that, that drum and bass style. But there are also just skips from the comp compiling, like, locking up all the, all the threads.
Yeah, it would be very interesting to even, maybe not even compile things by hand, but even to just have some way of manually calling these individual comp Well, I guess I could theoretically, like, call the individual compile files, and then, like, call the linker on just the new object and the objects it has to link to to make the library, and then call the linker on the other libraries. I'd have to figure out a lot more stuff about how scons works, though. Because that, that might actually be faster. Calling all the separate compilation functions by hand for an individual file that just happens to require uh, changing a flag. And it'll be very awkward if this doesn't fix the performance. Here we are, running pretty smooth. Okay, so I think it's maybe just, I'm honestly gonna assume that I'm doing something wrong with how I'm calling it, more likely. I'll give the, I'll give the bullet team more credit than I usually do. Now that I figured out that my big problem with the, uh, with the physics, was just having a big area intersect with a big complicated building. So I don't wanna I don't wanna make a fool out of myself too badly again. Okay, could I actually get up there? I forget if I'm actually able to do this. Oh okay, so you can just Okay, so you can kinda just cheese this whole little area. Oh well. Alright, well let's, I guess, maybe I should play around to figure out if the game doesn't freeze. Spooky. And eventually I need a better way of generating the low resolution meshes, because you can see little gaps in the terrain. And that's not normally there, that's just because the low poly versions aren't designed to like interlock with each other. Where am I? I've been falling for a while. There we are.
And I think... Let's see, Jackie's kind of jittering. Hang on, let's do... Um... Okay, so that second set of numbers, or that second row, shows the frame time. So it should be, ideally, just 6.94 to represent 144 FPS, but it's clearly not. But it's not bad. There is some just subtle jittering, though. Yeah, and you can see one of the chunks load there. Because basically the character significantly like jitters as she's moving, especially on the hoverboard. Hang on, I'm gonna lower the intensity of this volume a little bit. Yeah, the jittering actually causes less performance imp or the loading a chunk causes less performance impact than it used to. But I think the frame stutter is more obvious than it was. So I'll have to figure out what I want to do with that, because it's basically just... Like, it's not actually loading anything, it's just putting active entities in the scene tree. Which means that it has to call, like, the ready function and all that stuff, so it can be pretty expensive. And so pretty soon... I'll need to figure out how I want to actually deal with that once and for all. Because a few strategies are to just, one, convert all of my scripts to C++ would make it faster, like probably a good deal faster to insert things into the tree. But that would also be like, uh, basically like ossifying the entire game into C++, which would be a huge pain. And then I could also just load much smaller chunks, which could help. Which is honestly probably what I'll start with, at least. And then, um, I don't know, figuring out... Maybe trying to figure out some way of multi-threading. Getting objects into the tree and ready. But I don't know how much that would actually fix things, and I don't know. I have to- I'll have to profile loading specifically. I might actually- maybe I'll hijack my little profiler. Since I can just do whatever I want with it. So I can just make it, uh... Like, maybe expo- maybe even expose it in scripting. Or I could just set, I could add resource loader.load to the profiler. Yeah, I'll figure out what I want to do with that. I should probably, I should probably actually figure out what's causing the performance issues specifically, and then uh, do things with it. Oh. Well, back in the comfort of the indoors. That compilation took up most of the time that I was allotting to streaming, because I was thinking of only streaming until like 7.30, and it's already 7.50. Hmm. Now, ah, well, you know what? That'll be the stream for today. I did say it would be a short one. It feels very short. I don't think I actually did anything. But okay, I'm going to put in performance... So saving causes stuttering. That was done. So yeah, profile loading. Smaller chunks probably. Profile first. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Have a good night or a good morning or good afternoon.
next week. See you.